everyone this is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey short tutorial number 17 and this one we're going to be looking at how to add tabs to a GUI so let's just jump into it the first thing we're going to do is add in our control so with this we're going to be using the newest update which is the tab 3 if you're not sure about what they do just look up the documentation on the different tabs so we're going to be using the the newest one which fixes a bunch of problems that were in the tab and tab 2 so just like with our other controls, it's GUI add, and then we're going to be adding in the tab three control. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to position it on our GUI. And as you can see, I've already created my GUI with a width of 1000 and a height of 600. Um, so you might have to play around with that value if your screen resolution makes it too big or whatever. But uh, I think for the most part, most people will be able to accommodate a, a width of uh, 1,000 and a height of 600. So what I'm going to do is because I want it to, I don't really want it to look like uh, uh, strange on the GUI. What I'm going to do is I'm going to position it in the top left corner and I'm going to make it fill the whole space from the left to right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set its X position to 0 and its Y position to 0. So that way it's right up in the top corner and then all the tabs it will be added. Next I'm going to make its width the same width as our, our GUI. But with the height I'm going to leave a little bit of space below it. So that way we can add in some extra controls and I'll show you how to add in those. So I'm going to make its height 400. And right now if I run this now all we're going to have is just basically an outline of our... Uh, tabs so here we go it's I know it's difficult to see but there we go okay so now let's look at how we actually add in our different tabs so in the third parameter here what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our different tabs so I'm just gonna call my tabs tab 1 and then to separate the tabs what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a pipe which is the shift of this so, and then I'm going to add in my next control and I'm going to add in let's go with five I'll add in five tabs so now if we run this now what we'll end up with is five different tabs that we can switch between the next thing we're going to look at is if you're not satisfied with how these tabs look so you notice how I have all this space over here what if I want to make it so that way the tabs actually the buttons for the tabs or the way that I switch between the tabs what if I want them spaced out a little bit better so that way it uh, fills up this top row also likewise if I was to change this five to let's say a lot of text what I'm going to end up with is these tabs here are all going to be small while this one's going to be much larger and it'll look a little bit distorted so what we can do to fix this or to make it look a little bit better is we're going to create a little bit of white space now the way we create white space for the first one and we have to be very specific about it but all the other ones afterwards we can just uh, start adding in some space in between the characters and the pipes but for our first one what we're going to definitely need to do is we're going to put a, an escape character and then we're going to add X amount of spaces so let's go with five and then after our text what we're going to do is we're going to add in five more spaces and now if I run it I can see that that space has actually been added. I know it's a little bit because we're only adding in five spaces, so it doesn't really look that noticeable. But if I was to add, it'll start to become a little bit more apparent that we're adding space into it. And we can space them out so that way they're all evenly sized. And depending on the amount of text that we have on them, we can remove a little bit of space, add a little bit of space. One of the problems that you're going to get though is once our tabs start to get to a certain point within our GUI, so let's say if it gets to about here, if all our tabs start to get to here, what they're actually going to do is going to drop down and start a new row. So to prevent that from happening, what we can do is we can add in, and in its options, we can type in minus wrap. And this way, no matter what, even if our tabs go way off the screen, they're not going to drop down to the new row. Uh, what will end up happening is it'll start, it'll uh, add the ability to scroll, so you don't want that either. So just make sure you space them so that way they fit properly within the main screen of your GUI. And you can play around with the spacing until you're happy 
with how everything looks okay so like I said for the first one you have to make sure you add in this escape character because if you don't add that in it's not gonna actually add in that white space beside it no matter how much space I add it's not gonna actually add it in but if you add in that escape character you will get that space okay uh, let me see next what we're gonna do is um, let's say when we run our program here let me get rid of some of these so that way it's a little bit more manageable to see so I'm gonna re-add all those controls again now by default our first tab is gonna have focus when we run our program but if we don't want it to be the first tab that has focus what we're gonna do is after the control what we're gonna do is double up the pipes so if we want it to be if we want the third tab to have con focus when we run our program all we're gonna do is we're just gonna add another pipe in here and now when we run our program it'll be the third tab that's selected Uh, let's look at we can also add for visualization uh, we can make our tabs look like buttons rather than their default uh, tab looking thing so we're just going to add in type in buttons in our options and now rather than it looking like tabs they look like little buttons and the whole spacing thing works the same way with that we can also <clears throat> make it so that way our tabs rather than being on the top of our tab control rather than being up here we can have them running down this the left side the right side or the bottom just by specifying in the options uh, left or right or bottom and we'll run that quick so here we have it on the bottom but as you can see we can't actually it's it's very difficult to actually make out where our tabs end and where our the rest of our GUI begins so what we can do is we can add a border around our tab to make it a little bit more clear where it is so all we're gonna do is in the options we're just gonna type in border and now when we run it again it's a lot easier to actually see the shape of our tabs okay let's get rid of this bottom and put it back up to the top and we don't need the wrap because our buttons aren't going to be too big so next let's look at how we can add um, a label to this and how we can associate it with a variable so just like with our other controls all we do is to associate a variable with it all we do is type in uh, V and then the name of the variable we're going to be using that's associated with it so we're, I'm just going to call this var and then we're going to attach this to a label and we're going to call our label uh, label because why not I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to add in that label and add in its return next what we're going to do is when we so what we're going to do now is we're going to make it so that way when we switch between tabs it's going to execute this label and then we're going to test to make sure that that part of our program is working so now when i switch tabs i should get a message box there we go okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start playing around with that variable and we're gonna check out what its value is so that way depending on the value of that variable we can have our script do different things so what we need to do first as soon as our our label is executed what we need to do is have it submit those values or the new updated values of that variable so what I'm gonna do is just GUI submit and no hide so now whatever depending on which tab we're going to be on it's going to update that value now what I'm going to do because this next part I need to have a differentiation between numbers and other characters and things like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one is a two is two B three C and four D five E <clears throat> now what we're going to do instead is we're going to actually print out the value that's currently stored in that variable var 
when we do the submit. And what we should get is, depending on which tab we open up, we should have a literal string of that na tab's name. So if I hit this tab here, what I should get is a message that says 5e. And there we go. And likewise for the rest of them. Now, let's say that that isn't something that I want. I want it to actually be numerical values based on its position within our within the tab control. So I want the first control to be 1, the second one, the second tab to be 2, 3, 4. I don't care about their name. I just care about their position. So what we're going to do is in here, we're going to make it, we're going to type in alt submit. So it submits a different alter, a alternative submit man so that way we're going to get a, its position rather than the value of the the name so now when we run this again with our alt submit what we get is we'll get the number that's associated with its position so if i hit this one here i'll get a one if i hit this one i'll just get a five and we can use those the value that's stored in that variable to do different things depending on what we needed to do when you select that tab I think that covers that pretty much. Now let's go into actually adding in um, our controls. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment this out because we don't actually need it. And what we're going to do is we're going to start adding in controls. So now that I have my, my tab control added, if I start adding in any controls after it, it's automatically going to be in the first one but it's it's better to actually clarify where the control is going so what we're going to do is we're just going to type in here GUI and then tab and then we can specify its specific name so we can write in its the 1a and this becomes a problem when you start adding in that space or when you start adding in that space because you're going to have to in also include all that space to it. So the, easy, the better way of doing it is just use its position. So this is, the, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to specify here. So GUI tab, and we're going to do this into the first tab. And now all the controls that I add after that, so for example a button, will be part of that tab. So let's go ahead and add in a button. And I'm just going to play with its width and height. So I'm going to make its width 200, its height 20. <clears throat> if I don't add a specific uh, X and Y value, it'll just use its normal default margins. Um, in other words, what I suggest you actually do is use the relative positioning. So let's say if I want my first control to be up in the top left corner, what I would do is I would just do X10 and Y10 for my first control y plus 10 for my first control and then after that I'll use more relative positioning for my other controls and if I switch to tab 1 we now have our button right here and it's positioned 10 pixels down from the top of this control and 10 pixels to the left or to the right if I want to start adding controls to the other tabs all I have to do is just specify once again specify which tab that I want to add the controls to and we're gonna add this one we're gonna add to three to the third tab and we're gonna copy our button but we'll change its position a little bit so that way it looks a little different we'll do 100 by 100 we run it again and now when we run our third tab it's on that tab that tabs can and then our first one and so on and so forth <clears throat> now I had purposely like I said I had purposely made its height only 400 pixels so that way we could actually add some controls afterwards now what's gonna happen if I was to so I can see that this height is 400 so anything that's over 400 pixels so let's say if I do this to uh, let's say 450 so we can see that we're in the third tab but I positioned it Y 450 what's going to end up happening is we're not going to be able to see that control it's clearly still within the range of our GUI but because it's outside of the range of our our tab control we're not actually going to be able to see that control that button so if I run it it should be somewhere about here but 
as you can see we can't see that so we'll, if we want to actually add controls in this area here what we need to do is get out of adding controls to our tab the way we do that is similar to the way that we go ahead and set our font back to default and the way we do it is just type in GUI tab and then nothing following it and now when we add this down to here and I'm going to put this back to 150 so we'll have that button there so now when I add this control in here we should actually see it where I said we would so here we have that control right here and we have our controls for our tabs so that's how we get out of adding controls to our tabs let me see if I have anything else that we need to cover I think that's it I think that covers everything that we need in this mini tutorial um, so you know how to add in your tab control you know how to make tabs for it you know how to change it into buttons you know how to do the alt submit attaching it to a uh, label attaching a variable to it you know how to make uh, give a specific tab focus how to add controls into each individual tab and etc etc okay I think that's it for this one have a good day and I'll see you on the next one